Happy Monday, everyone. We've got more severe weather to talk about, more snow, more rain. And actually, tomorrow, things are looking a little bit more intense than what we've been seeing over the past month or so. And in fact, we have a slight risk from the Storm Prediction Center here in portions of Illinois, Indiana, over into Missouri, Ohio, and Michigan. And this is actually not driven by, but influenced by an actual tornado risk, a 5% probability of seeing a tornado or two up there in Illinois, northern Indiana, northwestern portions of Ohio tomorrow in this general vicinity right here. Once again, that means that there's a 5% probability of seeing a tornado within 25 miles of any given point within that brown zone tomorrow and 2% in the green. I do believe that there is a possibility that gets increased to maybe a 10% as we go forward, but the tornadic potential of these storms is not actually the main story right now. It's the hail. We've got a hatched risk of large, severe hail tomorrow in some of the same areas. We're talking about golf ball to maybe tennis ball size, maybe even a few of those hailstones getting larger than that. This can cause significant damage, so make sure you're prepared for that tomorrow, Tuesday, February 27th, in the highlighted areas, mostly in northern Illinois there. Let's take a look at the system that's driving this. You can see very clearly the mechanism that we've been talking about all week. We've got a trough digging in from the north here, and we've got a stream of moisture from the Pacific as a result of our subtropical jet stream coming into the United States here, and they're going to try to merge together a little bit and then sweep across the country and and just cause as many problems as possible. Watch that merger happen right here over the Great Plains and notice how there's not a lot of action right when the two systems interact. In fact, there's nothing happening here other than some snow flurries up there in South Dakota and Nebraska up into Minnesota and some heavier snow back here in Colorado in the Four Corners region. But what you don't see is there is actually an explosion of energy happening in the mid-levels of the atmosphere and we've just got to wait for that moisture to kind of interact with it before we start to see anything really start to pop up. And you can see that very clearly here about 8 or 9 p.m. tomorrow on the warm side, on the warm sector of the storm in the form of supercells in Michigan, Indiana, down into Illinois. And of course, we've still got the snow on the backside. And this very clearly shows you how much of a divide there is between the cold air and the warm air. And anytime you get those two air masses very close to each other, you usually get some fireworks in the sky. Notice how these supercells turn into multicellular systems and eventually a line of severe thunderstorms as we go into the midnight time period and the early morning hours on Wednesday. And it does look like the storms are going to mostly fizzle out before we get into the sunrise time period of Wednesday here. We're going to be left with some snow on the backside. So we could actually have severe weather, hail, and tornadoes in northern Illinois around 7 to 10 p.m. tomorrow. And then on Wednesday, early in the morning, we're going to go from that to having heavy snow in the Chicago area. And some of that will pass through Indiana and Ohio and Michigan as well. So it looks like the initiation for these supercells is going to be sometime between 7 and 8 p.m. That's going to be 6 to 7 p.m. Central, and the height of the severe weather risk will last probably until about midnight. Now, what's really interesting about this storm is we're going to have a ton of flow from the south, right? We've got warm air coming up from the Gulf of Mexico, and we've also got a ton of flow coming back in from the north. But in the mid-levels, in the upper levels, the 500 millibar jet stream, because those two really prominent jet streams are merged together, we're going to have some really fast flow of winds right through the the middle of the storm system. So if you put all of that together, you do have a huge element for counterclockwise spin in these storms. And that's why if we look at our significant tornado parameter here, things actually look really impressive tomorrow around the time the storms are supposed to initiate. What you're looking at here, this big red and purple blob is showing where conditions could be favorable tomorrow for a tornado genesis. Now, just because it's showing this doesn't mean that there's going to be tornadoes all over the place in the red. There has to be storms that enter interacts with it. And notice how right around 8, 9, 10 p.m., a lot of that red and a lot of the purple gets eaten away by those storms that pop up. So there's going to be an environment in place for tornadoes to form. And it looks like the storms are going to be able to actually eat or interact with that environment. And if this actually comes to fruition, we're going to have a problem or two here in the form of tornadic storm as we go through the evening period on Tuesday. And once again, if we don't have tornadoes, these supercellular thunderstorms will certainly be twisting enough to throw the moisture high enough into the air where we've got a lot of cold air aloft to produce some very large hailstones. So be ready for that. Despite all of this, I think it's very important to remind you to not be scared, but rather be prepared and just know that I don't think this is going to be a huge tornado outbreak or anything, but the possibility is there for some problems. And if we get that 10% hatched risk of tornadoes from the Storm Prediction Center, or if we have any other reason to believe that we should go live tomorrow, we absolutely will. And we'll have storm chasers on the ground and all that stuff. So make sure you subscribe to both channels. 
turn notifications on. And of course, there is a chance that the severe weather continues into Wednesday as well as this line moves a little bit farther to the east, but it's looking like it's not gonna be as intense as what we're seeing tomorrow. In fact, it's not looking very intense at all. So we're not gonna talk much about it. Just know that the rain's gonna continue through the rest of the east coast as we exit the week. Okay, so what's next? This is the 500 millibar wind zone of our atmosphere. This is where the subtropical jet stream and the polar jet stream are gonna be phasing together here over the next couple of days, producing our pretty big storm system in the central and eastern part of the US. After that goes by though, then what? Well, I'll tell you what, we've got a huge, huge ridge setting up. Today, we're having very warm temperatures in a lot of the central part of the US and even over towards the Rockies. In fact, I think we're breaking some records in some places. Well, if you think today is warm, it's gonna get even warmer. As we go later into the week and into the weekend, we're gonna have a huge ridge set up and that's gonna be promoting some very nice weather for the vast majority of us. It's gonna slowly move east and the warmth and the niceness is gonna spread over most of the US. But notice how there is another dip back here. The polar jet stream is trying to come back down a little bit, bring in some unsettled weather into portions of the Pacific Northwest. What's gonna happen with that? Of course, it is gonna buckle and try to bring another big storm system into the central portion of the US as we get into early March. Now, this is another really impressive looking storm on the models. I don't know if it's still gonna be there in a couple of days. If it is, this is something that we should probably be concerned about. This would provide for an enormous amount of lift out in front of it. So we would be talking about a lot of warm, moist air here colliding with some really impressive winds in the middle. This looks like a severe weather outbreak right now, but once again, this is March 4th we're looking at. Things will change before we get there. But yeah, definitely watching that one very hard as another big bowling ball trough threatens to move in. And just to show you the extent of how much lift that would have. So this is our storm system that we're watching tomorrow, right? Notice how it is sucking in some very warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico. The yellows and the oranges represent 60 to 70 degree dew points. And the cold, dry air is kind of represented by these purples and blues back here. So there's a definitely a big contrast. You can very clearly see the cold front moving in here. Lots of warm, moist air for it to sweep out of the way and cause thunderstorms. But notice what happens, okay? That next system has so much more lift. The warm, moist air gets pulled all the way up to Canada. And the cold air, the dry air, is a literal wall that looks quite a bit more intense. So this would promote a much larger severe weather system if this was to come to fruition. So we're definitely watching the March 4th through 6th time frame very, very close. And here's what all that looks like on the traditional map that shows the rain and the snow. Of course, after our rain and storms move out from this initial system that we're tracking today, we're going to be left with some chilly air back here through Thursday and Friday, but very quickly, we're going to have warm air advection from the southwest, and that's going to cause some very warm, very nice weather for the vast majority of us as we go towards the weekend. We might have some rain, some scattered showers and thunderstorms down here in the southeast, but we need to enjoy it while it lasts because notice how on March 2nd, we're experiencing some very heavy snow in the higher elevations over here in the west and some rain once again, even in Southern California as that next dip in the jet stream comes through and tries to cause a huge problem as we go into March 4th, March 5th, March 6th, watching that very closely as this could be our next big storm system that we have to be concerned about. Outside of the potential tornado risk tomorrow, the big story over the next six to 10 days is gonna be the very, very warm and nice temperatures that we're gonna be experiencing for most of us here east of the Rocky Mountains. We're gonna be much above average, especially between March 2nd and March 6th, right around the Great Lakes region. So much so you're gonna be tricked into thinking it's spring. But let me tell you something right now, it is not. You see all this cold air over here in the West? Eventually that is going to bust out and give us one last big cold blast here in the East Coast. And I still think we've got a chance of seeing one big daddy snowstorm before we get into complete severe weather mode, okay? So with that being said, we're having a sale on our Yolometers. If you haven't got a Yolometer yet, you need to get one. And if you don't know what a Yolometer is, you need to know a very big part of our snow coverage includes you. That's why I have developed the Yolometer 2.0. This thing is the most capable snow measuring device on the market. It's big. It's bright, it's beautiful, so it pops whenever you take those snow measurement photos. It's very pleasing to the eye and easy to read, and it even gets the kids into measuring snow. And it allows us to tell the story of every snowstorm by creating a huge database of accurate snow reports. It also just so happens to be how we raise money to invest in storm chasers, scientific probes, and other special equipment for our severe weather live coverage in the spring. So if you'd like to help out and join in on the 
the fun this winter, go ahead and go to shopryanhall.com right now and get yourself a Yalameter 2.0. Just like last year, we're going to do a bunch of fun competitions with the Yalameters during our live coverage. Just as long as you send in a snow measurement photo during one of our snow streams, you're going to be entered to win $1,000 at the end of that stream. That's right, I'm going to be giving you a thousand bucks for measuring the snow. We haven't had very many snowstorms this year, so we haven't been able to do a lot of the competitions, but if you buy a Yalameter and it doesn't snow for like two more years in your neighborhood, your Yalameter is still eligible for our contest. You don't have to buy it the same year that you submit your entry. All you got to do is click that link at the very top of the description and get you a Yalameter over on ShopRyanHall.com. Until March 1st, these things are going to be 20% off. This is a deal that we don't normally do, so take advantage of it. And that's all the weather I have for you today. Once again, if we need to, we're going to go live tomorrow. If not, we'll see you in a couple days. All right, that's it. Goodbye. Ooh.